Hello everybody, um, it's Andrew's weather predictions here, um, today we're going to be talking about upcoming weather pattern, including a potential winter storm for extreme northern portions of the United States, um, like areas in here, um, uh, not in there, more like in here, actually no, areas like in here, sorry for like the misconception. Uh, potential uh, for some severe, strong to severe, potential for a strong to to uh, potential for a prolonged strong to severe weather period, and um, kind of in here, maybe some other areas could get included eventually. Um, but this area in the second level of red is going to see it a lot more than the area in the other portion of the red. This area might see it a bit more often. Just have to wait and see. But first off, we're starting with the Weather Prediction Center. Currently, we have a low-end risk for some hailers out in Texas today with a warm front cold front kind of scenario. Tomorrow in Florida, there's probably going to be a low-end risk for some strong thunderstorms over there and a thunderstorm risk. Day three, nothing's really going to be happening except a winter storm is trying to build on the western side of the United States. Um, here's your... Forecast. I'm not really going to go too in depth. Tuesday, we start to see a winter storm coming out here. Tuesday, Wednesday, we're likely to see thunderstorms along this cold front here. Nothing severe quite yet. Tuesday, Thursday, we'll probably have a line of strong thunderstorms in this area at this point, with potential for very heavy rainfall across the Midwest with this. On Friday, yet again, we're probably going to see this front stall out. And there's probably going to be a severe risk, or at least thunderstorm risk, from across all these green areas. Some areas might just see a cold rain, though. So here's your precip over the next few days. It could be around a quarter of an inch in Louisiana. And we could see around an inch in Florida tomorrow and today combined. Take a look at that. Yeah, some places in Florida are going to see nearly an inch of rain. So that's going to be very interesting. Day four, we get a lot of rain in California. Day five, we start to see the rain in the Midwest. Day six, I'm going to get drenched with rain. And then again, day seven, I'm likely going to see rain. Over the next seven days, I'm expecting to see my area is in this kind of right in here. We're probably going to see near between 2.5 to 3 inches of rain over the next few days. Um, really, this is going to be the area that's going to be getting hardest hit. Um. I'm going to guess there's a flooding risk in Florida tomorrow, but there's not. There might be a small flood risk getting added to the Florida coastline in here, or it might be a large area in Florida getting added to a marginal risk of flash flooding. We'll see if it happens. Winter weather over the next few days, day five and day six. Day six, there's going to be potential across like the northern Wisconsin kind of area. A heavy snow potential across the Rockies as well. Um, here's day five, Wednesday. So we have a surface flow developing in Iowa. This will likely, or, or we have multiple low pressures across this area with our warm front all the way up into Canada. Uh, we have multiple different low pressure systems that are going to be moving along this kind of front. It's going to probably become stalled at some point, but we're going to have multiple areas of moisture to form along it. See day six, we have another low area that forms. Day seven, another one forms with the dry lines. So really going to have to watch. Um, and if you live anywhere in this red area here, like I've been saying, you have potential for severe weather over the next week or so. Um, because the pattern is going to become very favorable for these systems to just keep on transporting not really moist air, but moist enough air across a lot of this area. Maybe Dixie will get an event if they get some wind shear. We'll see. Um, let me look at the National Weather Service map. It's very quiet right now. Nothing's really happening. Um, look at the Storm Prediction Center. Um, yep, like I said, we have a hail risk today across southern Texas. Wind and hail, actually. Um, because of some lapse rates and some pretty high shear with Cape near 500. Um, look at the day 4-3 period. Very interesting. Brills mentions potential from days 6 through 8 for uh, severe potential. Um, if you want to pause this, uh, you can. I'll try to make a 
bit of a circle here on the area that's really important. He is saying the instability is going to be 2A for a 15%. We'll see if we get enough instability. If we can get dew points in the uh, above 57 degrees, we'll probably see a bit more of a widespread threat. Um, if we get dew points in the 60s, we'll have a lot more of a higher threat. Um, to, well, first, by uh, first, start by taking a look at the GEFS. We'll take a look at the continental United States here. Um, here is going to be your mean precip, and I here's your mean precip. We're gonna do this for the next, we'll say the next, do it right about to 240 hours. That's about when it stops becoming more dependable. So ensembles are showing Illinois over the next. 10 days getting 2.4 inches of rain definitely possible we have a wide swath i'm gonna I'm choose color here wide swath of one plus inch of rain likely across this area over the next 10 days or so now some of this will vary but somewhere in the midwest ohio valley we're gonna see a lot of rain uh mean snowfall accumulations over the next 240 240 hours there are some snowstorms that could dip down into the midwest now we might see one more snowstorm this is the area that's most likely going to see snow and interior northeastern united states along with the rockies they're going to get a barrage of winter storms um, over the next few days lots of moisture it tends to lead into big snowfall Let's look at your mean 500 millibar wind plot. Here is that short wave coming into picture. It comes into the picture Wednesday evening with a jet streak across to Wisconsin, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska. I need to change the color again. But we get a jet streak across Minnesota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, um, Kansas. Um, we also see a secondary jet streak the next day. We have a secondary jet streak across this area, and this is really going to be the area you're probably going to see the severe weather the next day. You might see an isolated event down here with that bit of jet stream. Um, and then you look at the Friday. If we get an event on Friday, the short wave is going to be in here. We have an amplified area of yet again more jet energy in here. We'll see what happens with the jet energy. Um, and then this is when we get a bit further out. There could be a Dixie event. We'll have to watch for that. Around the 15th, it looks like you're, uh, this, the, the, the ensembles around the 15th are very uncertain. Past 240 hours out, the ensembles get very uncertain. They do show a bit amount of jet energy at 300 hours out, so we'll have to see. But at this point, the models become a bit more un less uncertain. Um, here is going to be your uh, probability for 1,000 K or higher. Um, the last couple of runs were showing uh, probabilities for being a lot higher than the twelve, than the twelve Z. Uh, so this last run showed it being like a uh, should it being a bit higher. Zero Z had it around the same, but the twelve Z doesn't really have as much probability anymore for there being that much high cape. Um. Places in Illinois are probably going to get to see some severe weather with this at some point. Okay. So, in here we have a 27 percentile of SRH happening. That SRH parameter getting in there. We'll take a look at the main super composite because this is something that's very interesting. Look okay. at. And it's something that's fairly accurate. So, we get widespread. We get an area right in here. That's going to be your watch zone. We go to the zero Z, you get you start to see it transport a bit further to the south in Oklahoma and Kansas. That area is capped, but we'll see what happens with it. Then the next day on Thursday, it looks like an Oklahoma day, and then after that it gets uncertain. But there are some models showing Dixie events right around 300 hours out, so we'll have to watch for that. Now let's get into the part of the video that um, everybody's been wanting to see, and this is going to be talking about your severe weather winter storm type of thing. I already have it loaded with this year uh, with the 12z euro on 0z on Wednesday. Now the last the last couple of euro runs have not been as substantial as the euro runs in the past. There, um, the euro is actually probably the model. Oh wait, that's a pair. But the euro is probably the model with the least amount of instability or of cape now out of my, all of them which kind of surprises me it's also the model with the least amount of 
Which is general severe potential. It has a surface slow across Iowa and Nebraska at 18Z, but it has a very capped environment. And the last two year runs have been extremely capped for um, Wednesday. And that's going to really limit potential if we see that happening. All the other models really don't agree on that much capping inversion. Um, some of them show some slight capping in here, but I think the euro could be an outlier. We'll have to see, though. It does show a lot of heavy rain and severe potential and strong storm to severe potential across mainly this area with the euro runs now. But the past runs were showing this area in yellow getting a lot of severe weather potential. And the new runs are shifting further north. And I feel like a lot of the models are starting to shift into this blue area for more stronger storms than what we were talking about a couple of days ago. This area, if we can get dew points above 55 degrees, there's going to be a pretty substantial severe weather potential. You want to know why? We have 850 millibar jet here. Um, the hero doesn't show as high as some other models show, but we have at least 30 knots, and that's going to really put up some pretty big potential. Um, the gyro does show you get you get some dew points up there. Yep, middle 50s, up a little bit above 55, so that's what you want. If I zoom in a little bit into the Midwest here, which actually I'll do that after about... Here's Friday. We'll do it right about here. So let's take a look at your precept the gyro shows. The gyro shows this, this area getting drenched with rain and not further north, which is very interesting. It shows the the other. It did show the low being further north, and now it shows this low being further south, and the other low being further south. It shows the whole system being further south. The last year run with the zero Z showed a severe event on Thursday across the Midwest, and this one doesn't. So that's very interesting as well. Um, when you take a sounding at zero Z, we zoom in and take a sounding ahead of that convective band in the warm sector across Iowa. Get that right there. Get this. Now it's pretty capped and elevated, so. If this were to occur, you'd probably see more of a large hail threat and damaging wind threat rather than a tornado threat. You, you do have a very good holograph and good and good shear values, but the problem is you get that capping inversion and you get the elevation. Now, if the capping inversion breaks, then maybe you'll see some surface-based storms. But you also have a difference between dew point and temperature, which is going to affect the setup a lot. But if it's below 10 degrees, it's not really going to matter, which, or it's not going to matter as much. With that sounding, it's below 10. Down here, you see a favorable environment, but yet again, the capping inversion really hurts it. So we'll have to really watch what happens with it. It's more of a temperature inversion, actually, at zero Z, but that's 18 Z. We try to take a sounding in front of the convective band. It's just capped again. And that time, it's just a capping inversion, so. Um. Then on Thursday, the Euro shows a severe weather event happening kind of across Oklahoma, Kansas with this low pressure, the secondary low that I was talking about with the National Weather Service page. Uh, we're going to jump through this one quickly. Um, take a forecast setting kind of in front of that developing storm right there. Get that. Very capped environment, but very favorable environment. Um, everything's pretty good on the sounding. It's not that elevated, so you'll get potential for tornadoes if that cap breaks, and you have a near-perfect critical angle with that sounding. Um, if we go back to a national perspective, though, let's look at the GFS model next. So let's take a look right about to 180 hours off. So we start to see a developing low pressure here. We have a developing low here and one here. So we have our triple lows with dominating high over the Atlantic. Um, right around hour 120, this is Wednesday morning. We see a little bit of early morning convection here. Uh, if we look at the GFS's simulated cloud cover, very cloudy. That could limit this setup a little bit if you don't get breaks in the clouds, which the GFS is saying no break in cloud. So if we don't get those breaks in clouds, we're probably not going to see that big of a threat either. But 18Z, this is when we'll probably start to see our peak time here. We have a heavy snow band across this area with um, potential for some storms firing across this area and further south and here. And then, of course, you're going to have thunderstorms forming right by this low pressure system on the northern side. You'll get some thunderstorms to showers forming here. Um, if you do zoom in here uh, into the Midwest sector, uh, we have dew points at 18Z. Not quite favorable yet. 
21 today became a bit more favorable yet a bit higher dew points at this point temperatures though are going to warm up into the 70s which is going to create that dew point depression like i was talking about with the last so i think it's going to create that difference between the dew point and the temperature and if it's above like 10 15 degrees it's not going to be as favorable you see the gfs shows a lot of instability across the warm sector which is going to be a big factor with this uh we have some amounts of srh especially across this area Especially across this area, and it's probably gonna be, and there's probably gonna be something like this. So at this point, your greatest severe potential would probably be somewhere right where that is for H and K meets, which is probably gonna be like right there. And in Kansas, there's gonna be a little bit of S or H, which is gonna be a helpful factor for this. But at this point, yeah, you get your thunderstorms to start to form. I take it sounding like right there, kind of in front of everything. This one has a dew point depression of 11. Um, it's actually not that elevated, so that's going to mean a bit more favorable reality for tornadic activity. It's not really too elevated. You have some veering from the surf. You, know, you have a little bit of veering from upper levels to lower levels, and you really don't have too much veering in the middle levels, so it's probably going to be more of a QLCS mode if this sounding would verify. Um, uh, yeah, we'll take a sounding like right there. I don't think it's going to be very good. Nope, that's ahead of the warm. That's ahead of the keep. What about like right there, just in front of that? So it's actually not too bad, but it's capped. But I mean, you got a storm, so I mean they had to break the cap somehow, and you got a decent amount of forcing from this front, and then zero Z get pretty, pretty strong thunderstorm start to initiate across that sector here. It's a bit. It's not that actually. It's not. This actually isn't too elevated. Very well-rounded holograph with that. Lots of S or H. That's definitely a sounding for tornadoes, but you do only have 200 keep, but you get against the GFS, which underdoes the cave a lot. And pretty similar to the last sounding. Um, if you move along here to kind of... This squall really strengthens up. Um, then it comes over me at 9Z. Still strong. 12Z. Pretty strong still, but... Some of these could be severe, and then the and then it breaks up and then reforms kind of right on top of me, and then it forms to my south. We get, at this point we have dew points in the fifties down here. I'm just gonna cherry pick a sounding. Yep, that's not very good at all. Let me go zero z here. Still, it's gonna be a lot of training with storms. So that's gonna be a very big problem. But let's check Kansas. I want to check Kansas. Take a sounding down there. Okay, so the storms broke the cap at this point. They're going to be pretty elevated. They might be pretty elevated because of the um, LCL height being at near 850 millibars, but it's still not too, too high. So they'll probably be close enough to surface bait that they'll be able to potentially drop tornadoes. Very good hodograph. Low cape, yet again, GFS. We'll have to wait for closer range models to get an exact representation of the instability. But pretty well-rounded sounding there. Uh, you look about 165 on a Friday morning. You still see that convection there. We'll just look at the precip at this point. Lots of heavy rain. Uh, we'll go to right about 174. A whole, a whole ton of heavy rain here across this area. Um, lots of bands. And some of these, these are looking like kind of supercell tracks a little bit here. They're not entirely, but somewhere in this area, who knows? We could see uh, uh, some supercells with this if we get enough bearing in the lower levels to support it. But this shows a bunch of uh, tracks here, here. Now, don't get the exact placement. There's going to be a very heavy band summit setting somewhere up uh, in the Midwest. Probably, probably we're going to have a very heavy band of rain set up somewhere in here with this event. And wherever that sets up, you're going to get easily uh, two inches out of it and probably three inches in some spots. Yeah, three inches right about there. So, we'll take a look at the snow amounts with this because why not? Um, Kachira. GFS shows some decent snow. If I back out a little bit, we can get a full view of it. Yeah, it shows a lot of snow across the mountains. Um, let's go into the Canadian and then we'll go into UK Met and then we'll be over with this. Um, so the Canadian... So here's the Canadian. Um, we should probably go to 18Z on Wednesday. So the Canadian here showing the Canadian is not showing a severe event across like Oklahoma. It's really not showing this general surface level being further south, providing potential for severe weather. Kind of right here at this point. This is 18Z. We have enough dew points in the Midwest to support severe weather. 
Now, the Canadian is not being widespread with the upper 50s, which I think the upper 50s are going to be a lot more widespread than what the Canadian is showing. It's being weird. We'll just say that right now. It's also been further north with the heavy band of precip than more models have, so don't really go off the uh, heavy band of precip with this that much. This is right in front of that uh, kind of like a super cell forming right there, and we have a very, very good sounding here if you want tornadic activity. Your uh, difference between the two point and the temperature is only 10 degrees, which is not that high. Very good hodograph with high with high levels of shear and, and um, SRH, or storm relative velocity. Uh, we do have a fairly higher L EL height, which is going to be kind of your height of your thunderstorms. So this is going to be a bit higher than some, what some of the other ones are showing. We have very high lapse rates. So we're going to get hail out of the sounding, damaging wind gusts out of the sounding, and tornado potential out of the sounding. Now if we take a sounding a lot closer to the surface low here, just in southwest Wisconsin, um, you see here, a little bit less instability, a little bit less, um, SRH and in instability here. It's also showing a little bit higher of a dew point depression. It's showing more elevated thunderstorms. It's showing good hay, uh, lapse rates. So this would be more of a hail and wind gust sounding rather than tornado sounding. If I take it like right, just, I'm just going to take it right on the surface level. We'll see what we get. Okay, yep, that's not going to be favorable for anything. Okay, in front of the sur surface low, I have more central Wisconsin with this one. Okay, this is still, this has a bit better shear, but it's going to have veer back. So what this is, this veer back right here, this is called veer back. So the hodograph kind of comes onto itself. This is going to support splitting storms. So this is not going to be favorable for tornadoes. Yet again, hail and wind. The, the, uh, the Canadian shows the most favorable environment for tornadic cells in this area right in here still. Um, zero Z in the Canadian. I'll just take another sounding here. Uh, probably not going to be great. We'll just cherry pick a sounding in the Chicago area with the dews. Yep, that's not very good at all. Um, let's take a look at your precip, though. We'll just take a look at your precip 174 on Friday. Yeah, so the, it shows it's pretty similar to the euro. Very interesting. Um, let's take a look at your high shear. I want to see the shear across the warm sector. So, yep, the Canadian is showing a very high amount of lower level jet energy. This is going to be 50 knots or so, at least 40 to 50 knots of it. Um, your 500 millibar jet streak, it's showing a good solid 60, 70 knots. Um, very supportive for severe weather. Um... Let's go out to look at the um, UK Met model now. So we're going to look at the UK Met, the 12Z runs. This is 18Z. We're starting to see that 500 millibar jet streak. Uh, it's going to eject at 0Z across the warm sector. Boom, there you go. This is where your highest severe risk is going to be at this point in northwest Illinois, eastern Iowa, extreme southeast Minnesota, and town of southwest Wisconsin area. Um, if I look at the dew points to try to overlap that, and the dew points would for sure agree. You have upper 50s up in this area right in here. You have upper 50s. That's going to support your severe potential. You're going to have uh, very high amounts of shear. Yeah, this is going to be this warm sector is going to be very amped up. It's got a lot of inst It's got a lot of lower level chat off the UK Met model. The UK Met is going ahead and showing a widespread 50 plus knots of lower level jet energy. And if this were to happen, that's more than enough jet energy to support tornadoes. 700 millibar jet energy, very high yet again. This model does not have precipitation, but it has uh, rain tracks with it. So we'll look. Um, throughout the whole model run. So it shows, this is not through the whole amount of events, but it shows a solid inch of rain, or a solid half inch to my south, and it shows a lot of precip over this area. Over the next last six hours, it shows a band kind of down there. For the last six hours, we'll just take a sounding kind of in front of where uh, it shows that. Okay, that is, um, wow. Very, very good hodograph. Very high shear, pretty low LCL, so that's going to be surface based. It has some dry air in the middle and upper levels, has a bit of a dry slot. It has a bit of an instability slot in here. It's not the best. It's got a lot of lapse rates. It's got a 
decent amount of keep. That's a very well-rounded and good sounding for tornadic activity. Um, if you go into 60 here, kind of shows a convective band of uh, storms moving into Illinois at this point. And if I take a sounding out in front of that band with the dew points, yeah, it's not going to be supportive for severe weather, but northeast Oklahoma, on the other hand, and that's going to be supportive for maybe some isolated hail, but that's pretty bad as well. Don't know why I have an extra window of this open, but I will look at the para as well and what it's showing. It shows similar things to what the GFS is showing, but I think this is going to wrap it up for today. Um... If you like the content I provided, please drop a subscribe and like this. Um, I will see you in the next one.